Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Rhonda Robson and today we are working on wine glasses and specifically step one of my wine glass process. So that step one is to create a bloom and I create a bloom on a tile or a silicone mat and then I do my next step. But today is all about that first step. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rhonda Robson. And like I said in the intro today, we are going to be making a bloom to create paint skins. And what I mean by paint skins is this. And I'm making these paint skins to put on these really cute little wine glasses that I'm doing for a fundraiser here in the next couple weeks. So I have a beautiful uh, piece of art on the top and I have a beautiful piece of art on the bottom. So let me get you down this canvas, this actually tile technically, and let me show you exactly how I make a bloom to create the paint skin for my wine glasses. Bye for now. Bye. So the tools that you'll need will be like a tile, a glossy tile. I use a six by six glossy tile, or you can also use a silicone mat. It's really up to you. And then I use a turntable of some type to stretch the paint out. And the turntable I use, I put an old canvas on top of it. And then I have either a stick or a palette knife in order to uh, make the designs in the bloom. So those are the tools that I use. Now the materials that I use are Sherwin-Williams Ultra White Semi-Gloss Paint, and that is my base paint. Then in order to create the color paints, I use Sherwin-Williams Base C and Polyacrylic and then paint. And the polyacrylic is the Minwax polyacrylic. And I use those and I mix them together to create the paint color. Then I have a cell activator and the cell activator is Amsterdam paint with Australian Floetrol. That's the materials that you're gonna need for this. So let's get started creating the paints that you're gonna need. So let's start with the Australian Floetrol first, all right? So the Australian Floetrol is 20 milliliters to five milliliters of paint. All right, so let's go ahead and put our 20 milliliters of Floetrol in this. Let's go ahead and go up to 40, for six, we'll go to 60. There we go, there's 60. And then 15 milliliters of paint. There we go. And you need to mix it really, really good. And that's the consistency of a cell activator. All right, so now let's make the colors. So let's start by creating the paints that you're gonna need and the different mixtures you're gonna need in order to create the bloom. Okay, for my recipe, I use the polyacrylic water base clear gloss and I use the base C of the Sherwin-Williams. I do three parts of the Sherwin-Williams to one part of the polyacrylic. So I'm doing the Sherwin-Williams, getting about 33 ounces here, and then I'm gonna add 10 ounces, which will give me 43 um, ounces total. You mix that really well, and this is the consistency that you're gonna get. Okay, so let's talk about the paints to use. I use all different kinds, and when I do my wine glasses, I make a lot of different paint. That way I can have multiple different colors and multiple different styles of wine glasses. But let me show you how I mix the paint mix with the paint colors next. I use two different methods. Typically, I do a one-to-one -one ratio, but right here I'm showing you the paint, and then I add the polyacrylic, and then I mix it, and then I add in the base C, where you saw me earlier mixing the base C and the polyacrylic together. So when I'm mixing a whole bunch, that's what I do, is I mix the mix first, and then I do a one-to-one -one ratio. If I'm only doing a few at a time, then I do it like I'm showing you right now. And that's the consistency you want for the colors. Okay, so now that you've got all the colors made to create the blooms, 
We want to make those blooms in order to make these amazing paint skins to create the wine glasses. So I'm going to show you four different blooms. Let's get started. Okay, so bloom number one. The first thing you need is you're gonna need your pillow paint, which I have there, the Sherwin-Williams Ultra White. And then my colors, I mix with the Sherwin-Williams Base C and the Poly Acrylic, and then paint. And I'm gonna link all of the different descriptions down below and the ratios as well. And so once you layer the colors on the pillow paint, like I'm doing right now, then you're going to put what we call a cell activator. The cell activator is my Australian Floetrol and um, the Amsterdam paint. And then you can see that I am blowing down into the white cell activator and across the colors. And doing that helps to push up these cells and this web look that you can see right there. And so then what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the pillow paint and just getting over the gloss tile because these are gloss tiles, six by six tiles that I have. And I love using them because I can make multiple different designs. And so then once the paint has kind of gotten, you know, all the cells kind of started to pop up, then I start using some type of a device and I make little swirlies to create a design. Now once you get the design that you're looking for or the composition that you're looking for, the next thing you need to do is you need to get the excess paint off. So you can either tilt the tile or you can spin it out. And so I'm going to spin it out. And then once you're happy with the design, once you've spun or you've tilted the canvas, then you just let it dry. Then you would get an amazing paint skin that you can use to create these amazing wine glasses. Okay, so on bloom number two, instead of using a tile, I'm using a silicone mat. And again, I'm still using the same pillow paint and the same consistency for the colors that I have and using the Sherwin-Williams Base C and the polyacrylic and that mixture then with the paints. And so you layer the colors and I, I tell people when they layer the colors to put the color on the bottom that you really want to see in the cells. I'm using all neon colors today, mostly liquid text. I've got a couple Artezas and a master's touch in here, and I'm doing the full rainbow color look all the way from the reds to the purple. All right, so then you can put your cell activator on. And for this one, you're gonna see that I'm using a hair dryer to push down and glide the paint, the cell activator and the paint across the pillow paint. And then I allow the cells, spend some time allowing that paint to come back into the center to kind of almost bounce back. And that also helps create the cells as well. And then if you wanna use a stick or something to create more of a design, you can. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting a little bit of the pillow paint on the silicone mat to help glide the paint across. If you don't have that, then sometimes the um, color of the paint, when you spin it out, the weight of the paint will kind of roll underneath the pillow paint. So this way it kind of helps glide it across that pillow paint. Um, and so that's all I did there was I just added a little bit of excess white paint to kind of make it a little bit more slicker um, as it goes across. And then this also gives me an opportunity to allow the cells to kind of pop up in the center and allow the paint to pull back into the center as well. And if you see that there's a big spot right there in the center, it's white, right? So then I have this tool or I will use just a um, straw and I do the same thing and I just kind of blow down kind of like a little puffs and it pushes the paint down and it pops the cells up. So here you're seeing me use the stick and I am kind of making little squigglies all throughout. And for me, I use the stick or I use a tool. Basically when I see too much of let's say the pink and I wanna bring maybe some green into it or there's too much white and I wanna bring some color into it. That's how I determine where to do the squigglies. It's really up to you, um, it's your design, but that's the reason why I do that, to break up the color a little bit more. And so um, with this, because it was on a silicone mat, I really wanted to keep those cells in the center and so I spun it slowly and then now here I'm spinning it a little bit faster. 
But what I did hear that I don't, it's not a mistake, but I would probably do differently next time is um, I took my skewer again to get that center and um, it came out okay. And especially since I am using uh, this for the wine glasses, I probably next time won't use the squiggly after I've already spun it out. I think it was fine um, where it was now that I look back on it. And this is just a little bit more broken up than I wanted. But there's the glasses. Aren't they beautiful? All right, so bloom number three is on a tile again. And I've put the pillow paint already on there for us. I don't need you to see that. Um, and then I'm just going to layer the colors. And this one I wanted to kind of do like an ocean theme and I love putting neon colors in my color palette so you can kind of see I put that neon green in there and then I layer my colors um dark light dark light dark light uh that kind of helps with the contrast and then on this one you can see how I'm blowing straight down and now I'm going across and I decided not to bring the tile close to me. I wanted to just keep it on here. It's a little harder because then it gets paint on me. But anyway, it's no big deal. Uh, painters love to have paint on them because that means that they're working hard. We're just creative that way. All right, so then I took the little squiggly, uh, my skewer, and, and made little squiggly lines there in the center. And I love how this one turns out too. You're going to really like this one. So I spin it out, get the weight of the paint pull it out so you don't have too much paint on there and then um, after this when I'm done I allow it to dry for 24 to 48 hours and then I peel the skin off now in my next video which I will tag here I will show you how I peel the skin but there's the glasses are they gorgeous all right so here's the last bloom same thing you put your pillow paint on you get it on your tile and then you start layering your colors and on this one I wanted to do um, multitudes of different colors of purple and then using a black cell activator instead of the white on this one so there's different I did the medium light one on the bottom then I did the dark and then I did the light one on the top and then here's my dark cell activator with the black and then here on the tile I'm showing you how I use my dryer. So I'll straight, do straight down and then I kind of help glide it across. Sometimes I use the tool, you know, the um, tool that makes it narrow, the air narrow. Sometimes I use that and sometimes I just use, depending on how it's going, I'll just use my hair dryer, the round portion of it. So, and here I'm just kind of pushing the air back down to see what pops up. And some things do pop up. So that's what I was talking about, the narrow, um, where it narrows the air, the, the diffuser, I think. Anyway, I'm not sure if that's called a diffuser, but anyway, that nozzle on the end. But it didn't pop up so much, so then what I decided to do here is use my, my chef's torch to kind of allow some air bubbles to pop up and create some cells. So it's starting to do that. You can kind of see that right there. Don't get your torch too close or you're going to heat your paint up so much so that it actually starts to dry it and then that doesn't work very well. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the color and putting it in the corners. And on this one, I don't do any squigglies. I just spin, out, spin it out just as is and I really love it. So here we go. We're going to spin it out. And there you go. Really cool. I love that one. And then here's the skin. And then there are the glasses. Pretty cool. And that's how you do the very first step. Thanks for joining me. Next step next week. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell. And if you like this video, I bet you're going to like these as well. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Bye. Bye.